to watch what happens with Israel. We watch what's happening with Netanyahu and Obama. And we were here when there was, it was the election, the re-election of Netanyahu. And it was, right. we, we came there and it was like, he was finished, he's never, that's it. Everybody was saying he's finished. Everybody, people were rejoicing, you know. And we're looking and saying, wait, he's not, he's not losing. And then, and then all of a sudden, all the liberal sites went, had a blackout for like, for like 10 hours, <laughs> nothing about Israel. They were saying, oh, he's finished, nothing anymore. And then nobody's announcing it. And then finally Netanyahu says, listen, nobody's announcing it. I'm going to announce it. <laughs> I just won, you know. And it was like, yeah. it was like, <laughs> Uh, it was like a mira it was it was like a miracle and it wasn't supposed to happen and yet he just revived now I'm going to tell you something now behind all that and behind all these things and and I verified this because you know I want I want to be careful and make sure so sure. I spoke to the people who were eyewitnesses and one of them is my friend Ray Bentley a great pastor in California and he was there um, here's what happened there was an African minister who was who is in America but he's from Africa he says, the Lord spoke to him, he said, and, and said, you have to give a word to the prime minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, this is, this is in the late 90s when he was first prime minister, if you remember. Uh -huh. And now he says, there's no way on earth I'm going to be have a thing with that. He says, but he said, the Lord said, go to Dallas, I believe, go there, and you're going to be told what to do. He goes there, and he's at an event, and a man puts on his shoulder and says, you have to go to this other gathering, which he was supposed to go anyway, and he says, and that man, a man will come who will be the man who will bring this about. He goes there, and a man comes, speaks. It turns out, I believe he's the mayor of one of the, of Ariel in Israel, you know, uh -huh. when, and he, have, he talks to him, and the man says, I have a word, a word, and he says, well, you know, okay, let me see what I can do. The man, and the man, the, the African uh, minister's name is Robert Mawiri, and he miraculously is given an audience with Benjamin Netanyahu. So he goes to Benjamin Netanyahu, he's there, and Benjamin Netanyahu doesn't know what to make of this. He has people all the time in Israel who come and people, people give him prophecy. <laughs> people write down things for him. He says, okay, another one. Oh, and so, so he says, you know, he, so Benjamin, he says, you have, you have one minute. I have one minute, you know. So he speaks to him and he says, um, he speaks as the Lord. And he says, I have placed you in power. I have put you in this position. <clears throat> do not give up the land, my land. Mm -hmm. If you do, I will remove you from power. That's what he says. Now, Netanyahu kind of laughed a little bit, you know, and that's, they dismissed it. A little while later, Netanyahu was called to go to America, was pressured um, with President Clinton and he had Yasser Arafat, and he gave up land. And within one year, his government collapsed. He was removed from power. So he was removed from power. He's, an, he's the ex-prime minister now. And it's a number of years later, and Netanyahu is back in America for a gathering of Christians supporting Israel in a large church in Florida. Uh -huh. And the African minister gets another word. And he says, I have to speak to him again. And, they, and so it turns out they bring him backstage. It's in, the, it's in the green room and there is Netanyahu and his wife. And, and by the way, when he shared that first prophecy with Netanyahu, there was witnessing that was Ariel Sharon. Oh. oh. Ariel Sharon, he had no idea at the time, would later become prime minister and he would give up the land and he would be out of commission after that. And this would, but he witnessed that prophecy, that word being given. Wow. So now the man comes back to Netanyahu, he sees him, now Netanyahu recognizes him and now he's taking him more seriously because he's been out of, out of power. And so he says, I have another word for you. And so he says to Netanyahu and he has, he wrote it out actually. And he says, he says, you are not finished, oh. I will again place you back in power to lead the nation of Israel, and this time do not, you are not to give any part of my land back. You're not to negotiate my land. I will put you there, and it will be a critical time in the history of my nation. Mm -hmm. And it, there's more, I'll share a little bit more, but here's what happened. So Netanyahu now takes that, a number of years later, Obama becomes president, is elected president. Right after that, Netanyahu is returned to power. He comes back into power. And remember, Netanyahu has this prophecy in his mind now that he, that he takes seriously. Because it, and so, first of all, everything you see and why Netanyahu just doesn't go along with the, the pressure, he's got this on him, that he believes he's been put there, first of all, in any case, by the God of Israel, 
and that he was given a word of warning that, and he was taken out of power. And so from that moment on, he has not bent. I mean, he may, and he has not given up. And so, and it turns out, and so at this point right now, and that's why it looked like he was going to be defeated, but what happened? He was resurrected again. And, and the thing is that he is now in line to become the, the longest prime minister in the history of Israel, My. even more than David Ben-Gurion. Yes. And, and the thing is that, so he takes this very, so this is when you see all the stuff on the news, and this is why Obama and Netanyahu cannot get along. He is, he is going by this, this word that was given. And, but there, and, and there was more, because when the man gave him that word, he said, again, you will be here at this time when it will be the, a, a critical time in Israel's history. And he said something else. Listen to what he, he said, you will be there, it, it will be for the restoration of the tabernacle of David. Oh. That was wow. in the word. Wow. That was in the word that brought him back to power. Now, 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 what does that want to get into this? Because I actually did, I did, I did uh, one of the teachings is the mystery of the tabernacle of David, because this is a crucial thing. What is the tabernacle of David? And what is this? First of all, the, there was a tent that David set up in Jerusalem. On, the, on Jerusalem, he put the ark in there. Before the temple was there, he put this, his, his tent around the ark of the covenant. That was called the tabernacle of David. In Hebrew, the word is ohel, literally a tent. But then in Amos, you have a scripture that says, in Amos, I believe Amos 9-11, it says, it says, then I will again restore the fallen tabernacle of David, the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Now there in Hebrew, the word is an ohel, the word is sukkah. The same thing that is on the, the in tabernacles, those huts with the branches. It means kind of a flimsy thing here that he's saying, I will restore it. So what is the tabernacle of David? Well, first off, it's the throne of David, that, that David had a throne. David had a dynasty. He had, he had children. They were, there was a throne of David. And it was shaky because depending on who was on that throne. And it, then it, it became fallen. It was crushed, destroyed by the time of Messiah. You couldn't even tell who the heir to the throne was. The heir to the throne was actually Joseph, except he, there was a, I won't go into the whole thing, but because it, it's ultimately Jesus who can be, who is the, the heir of, of David's throne. So, but you had no kingdom. The tabernacle was fallen. But one man has raised that up, and that's Jesus. You know, his kingdom is in a sense the tabernacle of David because he is the son of David, and that's his throne. He shall sit on the throne of his father, David. Okay, so you have that, that you have that, that. Then also the tabernacle of David, it's not just the throne, it's the whole kingdom of Israel was, was, was this as well. So, so Israel would be fallen and God would raise up Israel like a fallen tent. He would put it back together and put it back. I will raise up the fallen tabernacle of David. Now there's more to it, but before I, I go with that, it was, it was uh, years ago, David Ben-Gurion, in the room that we were in, the, the first prime minister of Israel, it's interesting because in the prophecies, it says when they come back, David shall be their leader. Now, ultimately, that speaks of Messiah, but there was actually God put a David as the, as the leader. David Ben-Gurion is in that room, and he reads to the world, Israel, is, is, we have been dead basically for 2,000 years. We are now back in the world. He reads that there. It's May 14th, Friday. He says, at the, basically, at the stroke of midnight, when the British mandate ends, May 15th, Israel becomes a nation again. Now, they did it that day because, I mean, they did it at that time because the Sabbath was coming and they could not read it on the Sabbath. So there was a Sabbath that came and, and on that Friday night and, and Saturday, May 14th and 15th, and every Sabbath in the synagogue, there is a, an appointed scripture that you read. You open up the scrolls, it's called the Parsha. And this is appointed from ancient times. I mean, for every week of the year, there's a Torah portion, Parsha, and then there's a par portion of the prophets, okay? Interesting. I thought, what was the, what was the, the scripture that was appointed, that was read on the day, on that very Sabbath, when Israel came back into the world? You want to know what it is? Yes. I yes. can go home. I don't have to say. No, no, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. We want to. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> this is, listen, this is the scripture that was read, that God appointed from ancient times to be on May 15th, 1948. In that day, I will restore the fallen tabernacle of David. I will repair its broken walls. I will restore its ruins. I will rebuild it as it used to be. 
so that they may possess it, declares the Lord, the days are coming when the reaper will overtake the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes. New wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. I will bring my people back from exile. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. That wow. was the appointed scripture wow. after 2,000 years on that very day, all across the world in the scrolls, God was saying, I'm going to reveal them on that day he did it. And the scripture was the fallen tabernacle of David. Now, now here's, there's more to this because in the beginning of the, when you, when you, the, beginning of the age, you get to Acts, you have the first church controversy or council. It wasn't about, it wasn't about the Virgin Mary. It wasn't about, you know, penance. It was about, could you be a believer in Jesus without being circumcised? That was the first, that was the, that's how Jewish it was. That's the first church council in Jerusalem. And when you get to the end of it, James, or his real name was Yaakov, or Jacob, the brother of Messiah, he, said, he, gets, he says, basically, listen, my brothers, we have a word here. And what he quotes from, he quotes from Amos 9-11, the fallen tabernacle of David. He says, this, God is, is raised, going to raise up the fallen tabernacle of David, and people from all nations will come into that fallen tabernacle of David. So, uh, so there is saying there's another meaning of the mystery. The fallen tabernacle of David is also the church, is also linked to the church, oh. that we are part of this fallen tabernacle. Or in, in Amos, it's a fallen sukkah, which says something, that the church is made up, it's something that made up of people who are, it was fallen, but now God raises up their life. Broken pieces, he puts their pieces together. Yes. That's the kingdom we're in. It's a kingdom of the fallen sukkah, fallen t- that has been raised up. So we have a lot of fallen people raised up. We have broken people put together. Yes. And just like Israel, that's what we are. That's wow. what we are. So, and the other thing is, I mean, keep in mind too, as we said, if, you know, if the leader of the church is the son of David, who's the heir to David's throne, then the church is, is part of this thing of the throne of David. We're linked together in that. So you have all these things together. You have Israel, you have the church, but there's one more. It was, the tabernacle of David was the tent that was around that Ark of the Covenant. Now, it was standing in for something else. It was waiting until the temple of Jerusalem could go up. The temple of Jerusalem. So the, the, there's a link between the tabernacle of David and the temple of Jerusalem that is yet to come. That is yet to come because it houses the Ark of the Covenant. So here's, here's something now. Could it be, now, now with this prophecy given to Netanyahu, I mean, this is all we don't know, but could it be towards the restoration of the temple of Jerusalem? Mm. Now, here's, here's a sequel. The, the African man, the minister, Robert Mowery, and, uh, and Ray Bentley, uh, the, the, my friend here, were there in, Jer- I believe, Jerusalem. They saw, had an, another audience with Netanyahu. And this time Netanyahu was, you know, open arms and, you know, considers them friends. And, and he gets out, he takes out a picture in his office and holds it up to them and said, this is what it's all about. And what did he hold up? He held up a picture of the temple of Jerusalem. He said, it, this is what it's all about, oh. the restoration. So here you have a prophecy about restoration. Yes. And you have, we've we shared the mystery before about this time period is actually the time period of restoration when the last time you had the land, then you had Jerusalem. What's left? Well, it would seem to be focusing in on that, that, that thing. So, so could it be, we have nothing has to happen, got it, but could it be that what we know this is, has to happen in end time prophecy, this has to happen. And then you've got all these things and you've got this, this prime minister of Israel with a prophecy that he's going to be there. It's going to be linked to a critical time and a time of restoration. But also that always also brings war at the same time. And could it also oh. be, so whatever happens in Israel has an effect on the church. You know, when, 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 when the rains return to Israel, the land of Israel, after 2,000 years, there was barely any rain. It returns when the Jewish people come back. The rains come to the church. That's when you have the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When things happen with Israel, things happen with the church. And, and the church is linked to this mystery of the tabernacle. So could, could God also be doing a restoration in the church as well? So oh, that is something you will be. never hear in the news. But when you watch Netanyahu, when you watch Obama, know that there was a word given that has come true that actually Netanyahu was spoken to and takes this prophetic word very seriously. Wow. Amazing. Oh, Powerful. Nice. Wow. I, 
I think something that so many don't realize is that the last days are linked to restoration. Absolutely. Yeah, there's going to be judgment. There's going to be a, a, a fearful time. But it's going to be an amazing time yes. to the church. He's, yeah. going to, he's going to restore. He's going to restore what's been taken from yes, us. Yes, absolutely. He's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Yeah. And in Israel, it's, it's going to be an amazing time. But there's warfare. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's a mystery that, you know, at, there's a link between the end of the age and the beginning of the age. And what happened was at the beginning of the age comes back at the end of the age. Israel was at the beginning, so it's restored at the end. You know, and the church was the book of Acts. God wants to restore that for the end. The yeah. same dynamics, I know we'll talk more about it, the same dynamics are being put in motion that were in the book of Acts. And so, I mean, for good and bad, but, but ultimately the bad is used for good. And the, the um, you know, the, the other thing with this is that, you know, there's this link at the end of the Hebrew year is the, is the time called teshuva. And that's the time of trumpets, you know, Yom Kippur, teshuva. Yes. And now, now teshuva means to repent, time of repentance time, but it also means time of return, time of coming back. Mm -hmm. And so the, the mystery is God set up this age as a Hebrew year. And so the end of the age is the time of teshuva. It's a time of coming back, return, time when the Jewish people return to their land, time when they return to Jerusalem, <clears throat> time when they're going to, beginning to, return to the Lord. But it means it also must be the time of the return of the church to what it was back then. Back then, that's what God wants. God is calling a book of Acts to yes. come again, just as it was then. Yes. yes. And persecution is part of the picture too. But but there, there's a, the link is there's a link between persecution and the book of Acts are not are not separate they go together. There in the book of Acts there was persecution and you have the book of Acts. Well sure. there's persecution we're watching coming. Next thing God wants is the book of Acts. And then at the like right now that the Temple Mount. I, I, I mean I don't know a, a, a square mile or how many feet that is. Yeah. On right. earth that has more controversy, has yeah. more warfare over it. None. Than the Temple Mount. None. And, and it, it makes so much perfect sense because first of, all, first of all, Israel has never returned to the land without building the temple. Never, never, mm. every time. And the other thing is that, you know, what's on top of that mount? You know, the, the Dome of the Rock and all these things. And you know, when God has a purpose, we know what's going to be on that mount. Messiah is going to reign on earth from that mount. That's the throne right there. That's the throne. It says water will flow forth from that mount, from the mountain of the Lord in that day. It's going to be all from that throne. So what does the enemy do? He sets up things to block it. You know, the enemy says, you know, this is my throne. I will sit on the throne of God. So he puts his own thing. So there's so much controversy. This last, everything we just spoke about in the last programs about what's erupting in Israel began with the, the Temple Mount, began with the fighting on the Temple Mount, which began began on the eve of the Feast of Trumpets, Elul 29, that's when this began. So it's all the, 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 everything is there. When things are heating up, it's, you know, there's something more to the story. There's something more ahead to the story. So even that is something. This all focuses on that. So, you know, people that say nothing happened on Elul 29. A lot happened my, in this look, Shemitah. Just yeah. this warfare that has it began, began on the Temple began Mount area, on that day. and it's getting worse and worse. They're killing, they're maiming in the streets of Jerusalem. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Uh, Something's about to happen. You can feel it. You can sense it. Yeah, the, the, and, and then, uh, I mean, add on top of it the time we're in, which is linked to war and linked to Israel. Um, yeah, and, but that, that is the way the enemy works. You know, when the enemy's going crazy, heating up in your life, you know if you're in God's will, this is a great, beautiful, good sign of what, it's giving you a hint of what God has ahead because the enemy's attacking the future purposes. The enemy is a preemptor. He always tries to attack something before it happens. You know, he tried to wipe out Messiah when he was a baby. If you got him there, you know that you're finished. Try to wipe out Moses when he was a baby. Try to wipe out humanity when he, Adam and Eve in the garden. You know, that's the, the enemy always tries to cut something off. When you look at the, the, the satanic thing that happened in the world with Hitler coming and trying to wipe them out, when did it happen? Just before God was about to bring Israel from the dead. He was going to raise them up. That, that's what the enemy, the enemy has an idea. He always, he's try, trying to stop Messiah at the beginning of his ministry. So when the enemy's going crazy, it is a sign. If you're in God's will, a sign, you know, just, just toughen up, stick and get, get press on because you, there's an encouragement there. There is something on the other side 
outside of this little problem that's going to be so great. So that, that's true with us, and that's true in the world. When you see this heating up with Israel, there's a reason for it. Before the Six-Day War, the, the, arm, the Islamic armies were all gathering around to wipe out Israel. But what was going to happen? Jerusalem was going to happen. You know, it, every restoration came through war with Israel. Every single one, you know, came with an attack, and then out of it, God brings his purposes. That's the way God works. The enemy tries to stop it. God even uses the enemy to bring it about. Yes. They're under attack. They're surrounded by enemies, which the Bible talks about. Yes. All nations, self, all nations will surround Israel, will come against Israel over Jerusalem. And look where we are. We've got an Israel, we've got United Nations, and what's the, what's the ultimate issue? Jerusalem. Jerusalem, it's exactly what the Bible said. Netanyahu, will, will he bomb Iran? As, Iran said they're going to destroy. Yeah, and they and they are still it's, working on. They just came out. They're working on the Jewish people on, on long term on long range delivery of these missiles. And America says, yeah, they're breaking it. And Netanyahu, what he said, I mean, what he we'll see. But what he said is, we're not going to allow this. So yeah. what does that mean? We'll see. Yeah. What does that mean? He has a resolve. He does. Yes. And he has a trust, you know. And and, and so imagine being him wow. and watching when you were supposed to lose, but you remember, you remember that word, you were supposed to lose, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, you get, you're preserved in the position of power, which is what the prophecy said. Yes. Imagine how, what he must think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so these men in, in his office, mm -hmm. and Netanyahu takes out the picture of the temple, said this is what it's about. This is what it's all about. People, if you don't know the story behind the story, if you don't know what's really going on, this is, this is the real news you're hearing on the program today. And this is what God is, is letting us see a little vision of. Yeah. Because amazing things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the Jews will return yes. from all over the world. And they're going to return from America. Yeah. That means something amazing yeah. has to happen in the United States of America that yeah. half the world's Jews will leave our country. Yeah, you know, every single time God said it and he did it. You know, people back then were saying, you know, how are the Jews, the Jews are never going to leave Europe. They're never going to leave Germany. I mean, there's so much, in, there's so much, you know, uh, entrenched in it. There's no way, why would they go back to this Middle Eastern wasteland? No. And yet God said it. It happened. One way or the other, it happened. They said, well, they're not going to use, they're not going to leave Russia, Soviet Union is not going to let them go all of a sudden. Soviet Union opens up, millions go. God has, and so God always has a way of making it happen. But he says, I will bring them back from all lands. And the biggest one is America. Now, outside of Israel, this is the biggest last reserve. Um, so what would happen in America for, for masses of Jews to go back? Well, shaking, that would do it, you know, could do it. Economic collapse, anti-Semitism, all those things could be part of, what, but something's going to have to happen. They're not, most Jewish people are not going to say, hey, I'm just going back to Israel. Something has to happen, which, play, which goes along with everything else. What, the what, tetra, Jeff? the four blood moons, took place when Israel became a nation. And then they became, then there was a tetra again in there, yes, the last one was in 19, right around 1967. The one before that was around 1948. But when they, and when they took over Jerusalem. That's right. And God puts the signboard again. These are big signs. They're pretty big. The moon's pretty big. That's a billboard big, big <laughs> billboard. And God's saying, and every time it seems to be the movement of the Jewish people. Did you, mm -hmm. Have you noticed that at all? What happens is we learned in school about Ferdinand and Isabella, great people. Well, they're not, not necessarily so great people. They said, <laughs> basically throw the Jews out. You know, Spanish Inquisition, they're not, you know, first of all, they, first of all, they said, every Jew has to convert to Catholicism or, or, get, or you leave or we kill you. So, and those who did convert, later on they launched the Spanish Inquisition because they didn't believe they were, they were real. So that was, the Inquisition was launched against the Jews who converted and still kept Sabbath or still did something Jewish. That's Jewish, so we're going to have the Inquisition. So that happened. So they gave them in 1492, they said, here's the date, you're out of, you're out of Spain. And so what was, you know, the, the date that they said, you, they ended up having to get out of Spain 
was the ninth of Av, the day of calamity for the Jewish people, when the temple was destroyed, second temple was destroyed. On that day, they're fleeing all over. Ships are, are, are fleeing Spain, looking for a homeland, a new homeland. And the very next day, one of the ships in the harbor, three of the ships, was the Nina, the Pinto, and the Santa Maria. Columbus was in that harbor. So, and, and, and so here the Jews are going out. He's in the ship with Jewish people on his ship as well. And he's going to go out. And so what's going to happen here? The day of this great calamity, one of the greatest calamities of the Jewish people, when they lose their greatest homeland, God is getting ready to bring America into the picture, which will be the greatest homeland after this. So while the greatest calamity is happening, God sends Columbus to discover America. And America will be the greatest refuge after that. Look at, look at God in the middle of calamity. And so, you know, we, that's another kind of story we don't hear in, we didn't hear in school in the history. They don't tell you that, that, you know, that God actually, his purposes were even behind America, you know, happening from this. Yeah.